I look down on him because I am upper class. I look up to him because he is upper class. I know my place. In the 21st century, you might think climbing the social ladder has got easier. But actually, it's getting harder. In many rich countries, the class you're born into still dominates your chances of making it. No one talks about these sort of hidden privileges that are going on underneath the surface. So what's gone wrong? And what can be done to improve social mobility? What can be done to bridge this social divide and widen access to higher education? In Britain, a new breed of state schools like this one have sprung up, catapulting kids from lower income families into top universities. So now let's solve this problem and then talk about what that K value means in the context. The NCS is located in Newham, London's second poorest borough. While nearly half the students here are on bursaries or qualify for free school meals, an indicator of deprivation, last year, 95% went on to top universities in Britain. We're humans, we have the same capacities, we should be able to do the same thing. Most will be the first in their family to get a degree, let alone one from an elite university. My parents haven't gone to university, so I didn't really have, like, mentors to guide me and it like now me aspiring to go to like Oxbridge that's a huge deal. Coming from like a working class background people like immigrant parents they really like to push the education thing so much because they want their sacrifice to matter they want children to break the class barriers that maybe maybe acted as an actual barrier for them. Head teacher Mohsin Ismail grew up nearby and left a six-figure salary as a lawyer to run the school. He is passionate about boosting social mobility. Where you're born shouldn't dictate where you end up. And just because you're not born with a silver spoon in your mouth, but if you're talented, you should be able to realize your potential. He keeps the school's performance in constant view on his office window. He says improving students' life chances means running a so-called super curriculum. As soon as you hit this wall and go outside of the box, the potential energy is infinity. And today, it's quantum mechanics. So we've got this idea that when we're inside the box... I think the difference between what we do and what other schools may lack is the forensic focus on the fundamentals, being uh, unashamedly academic, um, unapologetically ambitious for our young people. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it all worked out. It probably helps that the school only takes the very brightest. Last year, they had 4,000 applications for 300 places. How many pieces of clothing have taken? 100, yes. And schools like this are starting to make a difference by challenging private fee-paying schools, bastions of Britain's class system. You're not so clever. You can't afford the fees. So we all... Schools like Eton College have long been pilloried in comedy sketches like this for disproportionately feeding Britain's elite. Just over a third of the nation's prime ministers were educated there. But private schools hold over elite universities is declining. In 2016, around 40% of UK admissions to Oxford and Cambridge came from private fee-paying schools, despite the fact that only a small proportion of children attend them. But by 2020, that figure had dropped to near a 